r slash ask reddit by redmond dts what's your worst nice guy story part two one time my boyfriend and i broke up and i used to sit by myself at this fountain in campus this classic photo redoot slightly chubby with a face of a 10 year old covered in stringy facial hair would visit me his voice was the loudest squeakiest thing it could break glass normally we had small talk like three minutes worth then i would go to class this went on for two days one day he nervously asked if i would like to visit los angeles with him the coming weekend i had to decline since i was going out of town to visit my parents ever since that day he has not talked to me he passive aggressively runs the opposite direction when we cross paths if he's in a car and i'm walking adjacent to him he will hit the gas and floor it out of there I overheard him talking with his friend sometime later about how women are insensitive seas and take pleasure in hurting guys. I don't even know man. Poor dumb bastard used up all his confidence and self esteem reserves. I used to bartend. Lots of hitting on me from the other side of the bar. They'd chat me up, ask when I got off, etc etc. I'd be polite, I mean, they hold my tips, right? Polite polite polite, nice nice nice. I'd make the boundaries clear. ETC ETC etc. A dude who was super nice until I politely told him that I was not interested and asked him to clear the bar. This winner called me a frigid bitch and told me that he'd fine for me out later that night. Bouncers escorted him out, and I had to be walked to my car for a week. He basically explicitly told me he was going to rape me. I'd see lots of girls pushed up on. I'd get the begging eyes, ladies know what I mean. The please save me, sister look. There's a shooter called a cement mixer. It's most Irish cream liqueur, but a float of roses lime juice is poured on top. It's really lovely, but when they throw it back the citrus curdles the Irish cream a little. I weaponize that stuff. Help me, sister, eyes meant dude bro got a free shot. Had a Korean pen pal for a few months seemed pretty nice we talked online and on the phone a couple times i had lived in korea for a while before then had come back to the us and there were some cheap little snacks i said i really missed and couldn't find because i lived out in the middle of nowhere he offered to send me some and he seemed nice so i gave him my address to mail them to me well big fine mistake he didn't end up mailing the snacks he decided he was going to surprise me by flying his butt down to the US and come to my apartment. To my horror, documenting the entire trip and sending it to me. Fortunately, it was gated and he was too epically stupid to think of sneaking through the gate behind someone, but he kept sending me pics of him outside the complex patrolling the perimeter and asking me to come out and see him so he could take me on a date. He was outraged that I would not come out and see him after he had been so nice to fly out there and tried to entice me with gifts that he had brought. He was under the impression that this gesture was romantic. His I'm outside your apartment self eyes turned into post cry self eyes and why don't you want to be with mez and so on and so forth. And no, this dude and I never talked or even joked about the possibility of a relationship prior to him showing up. I tried to explain why it wasn't appropriate for a 50 year old dude to fly to another country and stalk a 20 somethings apartment, but he didn't get it. He said it wasn't stalking because we were friends and I gave him my address so he assumed he was free to come over. I told him to f off but apparently that got lost in the language barrier to awesome crap. I didn't want to leave the apartment but I eventually had to go to work. I worked about 45 minute drive away. Well. He followed me to work, parked behind me and rolled down his windows and tried to talk to me. I ran into the building which thankfully had security gates and no unauthorized people were allowed in. I was worried he could have stayed in the parking lot until I got off. Turns out I was right, so I asked a couple tough looking dudes to walk with me to my car and block him into the parking lot so I could at least get a head start even though he knew where I lived. So yeah anyway this continued for about 10 days until he had to go back to Korea. He mailed me a ring with his and my name engraved on it and I moved and now I don't have any more pen pals. Edit. Caps and words. A high school friend of mine asked me to sleep with him several times throughout our friendship, into when we were in college. 
He would alternate between trying to convince me he was in love with me, and insisting he was not and that it wouldn't mean anything. I always turned him down and said I just wanted to be friend etc. He would whine about how unfair it was that I wouldn't help him out, and the typical BS about how all girls only like buttholes, so he could never get laid. I moved away, and a few months later got a text from him saying my younger sister owed him money. My sister is an extremely emotionally unstable heroin addict, so I knew it couldn't be good. I learned that he had tried the same with her, even saying the same exact polony, and when she turned him down he tried to coax her with cash. Unsurprisingly, she took the cash. When she didn't sleep with him in turn he started hounding my family to get it back. Piece of crap. A guy that I was friends with for a few years tried to get me to sleep with him because my boyfriend is in another state right now. Apparently he was only friends with me because he expected I would end up sleeping with him at some point and he thought me being in a long distance relationship was the perfect time because he actually said. Who would know besides us? Besides you know you want to and by doing so I haven't been wasting my time. Needless to say I gave him a bloody nose and have now blocked him in every way. When his sister asked me what happened I told her. She kicked him out of her place because she found out he had done the same thing with some of her friends. He's now living at home and has lost a ton of friends because his sister told everyone what happened. So my nice guy friend has been nicely exposed for a fraud and can't even get laid now. A few days after my boyfriend and I had broken up I get a message from an acquaintance I hadn't spoken to in years telling me he's picking me up and we're going to dinner so I should dress nice. I try my best to politely decline, even though I really don't like the fact that he's more or less demanding I spend time with him. I tell him I'm not interested in dating right now because I'm still recovering from my breakup, which is the truth, and that I would prefer to spend some time alone. He sends me something like 40 texts that day saying I'm being rude and conceited, that he was just trying to be nice and cheer me up, and how no wonder my boyfriend broke up with me. He says he doesn't care, he's still picking me up and I'd better be ready on time. Finally I've had enough and tell him to leave me alone because he's making me feel uncomfortable. If he had just started a conversation with me and asked if I wanted to hang out and catch up I probably would have said yes. Lived in a dorm with this guy who ended becoming insanely obsessive and possessive even though I told him I would never date him. First he sent me a bouquet of 24 long stem white roses. Then he sent me one of those 5 foot tall giant teddy bears. Then I failed by due to test, was pretty sad about it, and he sent me another bouquet of long stem red roses. I got angry with him and told him to stop treating me like his girlfriend, since I would never date him and stuff. He told me multiple times that he told his friends that I was his girlfriend, and that he was only happy cause he had constructed this imaginary world in his mind where we were dating and that's what made him happy. I went to prom with my friend who was a year younger than me just friends. We were going as just friends. He demanded the guy's name, wanted to search him up etc. He lived about 5ish hours away from me. He would come to my city and get a hotel downtown and force me to see him the entire weekend, Saturday and Sunday. When I told him I can't see him both days due to family thing and other plans he would flip his stuff and say I paid X amount of money to come here, and you won't even see me the whole weekend. Well, I didn't ask you to come and spend that money. Then I moved back to the city we go to school in, different city than where we both lived. He showed up to my apartment in that city after me not telling him where I lived. He would constantly call me demanding I talk to him even though I would tell him I was busy. It was a stressful time in my life I won't lie. Completely ruined my summer having to deal with this crap for 4 months. He's done and out of my life now though. Edit. Getting a lot of comments about why I still saw him and it's my fault and that I'm stupid for enabling him. Obviously some people don't understand how scary this is. I was more terrified to say no cause I didn't know what would happen. He got my address without me telling it him for fs sake I had no clue what else he would do but regardless, I'm the dumb one. Jokes on him. White roses signify friendship not romance. Worked at a well known game shop in my local mall. Sold things like board games, puzzles card games like Magic the Gathering, 
Yu-Gi-Oh, etc. Anyways, I'm working behind the counter when a couple guys walk in. One of them has a list of specific magic cards he wanted for his deck. I pull up each card on the computer, find it through the copious amounts of binders and set them aside for him to pay for it. The whole time I'm being friendly and making small talk, like someone in my position is supposed to do, especially when my boss was next to me. He pays me, thanks me then leaves. The next day, I come in for my shift but come in pretty early so I wait and sit outside the store on a bench. Then here comes Mr. Nice Guy. He sees me sitting alone and comes over to talk to me. I am not a very talkative person unless I have to be, so I'm already pretty. Annoyed. That he's talking to me outside of work. He does the small talk then goes straight to asking me for my number. I politely decline. Saying I don't give my number out to people I don't know. Then he did the classic. Oh, then my name is blah blah blah, what's yours? I said, my name's Miss Knox. He holds out his hand for a handshake. I shake his hand but when I pull away, he. How do I put this? Lingers on my hand too long? Like, I pulled away and his fingers glided across the back of my hand. We're not strangers anymore. Yeah, no. Sorry buddy. I still don't know you. I'm not giving you my number. He then gets that butt hurt look. So you have a boyfriend, huh? Yup. You should have just told me that. Then got really pissy and went into the store. Like. I'm sorry I didn't tell you yesterday that I had a boyfriend while I was working to give you a metric ton of cards. Being friendly was my job, don't take it any other way. I knew a nice guy in high school. His version of hitting on girls was stare at them awkwardly for extended periods of time until she noticed. Keep in mind. This was the most popular girl in school, so she was constantly getting flirted with. Now, I have a tendency to lean back in my chair especially in the middle of class, so I would occasionally block his view of her by mistake. He let loose on me one day and told me I was interrupting him and his girlfriend's love time. I have no idea what the hell that means but I least knew it wasn't mutual. She later came up to me to tell she was thankful for what I did, which was nothing, and continued about her day. High school is weird. A few years ago my buddy hosted a party. He invited this one guy out of pity since he really had no friends. Let's call him Ahmad. Now Ahmad really had a thing for this girl at the party let's call her Nadia but she friends owned the f out of him. He spent the entire time at the party being passive aggressive towards her and making cringe worthy sexist jokes and passive aggressively trying to see block any guys that were trying to talk to her. And how Nadia got really annoyed with him and kept belittling him after a while then decided to have really loud nookie with this other guy at the party towards the end of the night. Ahmad cried himself to sleep cuddling with a pillow he thought belonged to her but really belonged to my buddy who hosted the party. My buddy disposed of that pillow the next day. That's some John Arbuckle level pathetic. There was this guy at my school, let's call him Jake. He always used nice guy tactics to try to get girls. He would cozy up to them under the pretense of friendship and then try to ask them out. During our junior year he was doing this to a sophomore named Cat. One day during school he got two dozen roses and waited around a corner he knew she walked by. When she walked by, he jumped out with the roses and asked her to prom. She said no. Later, he said that he was a little upset about it, but he would ask some other people. At that point he pulled out a list of girls names and crossed Cat off the list. A few days later he asked the next girl on the list and turned down again. Edit, spelling. I've been the nice guy a few times. I never got abusive when things didn't go my way, but the crushing heartbreak I felt after rejection was eventually how I discovered I'm pushing around a tremendous wheelbarrow of depression. I still don't know how not to be the nice guy. But I'm much better about not fixating on women, and moving on quickly and permanently when I'm turned down for a date. You nailed how to avoid being a nice guy. Be honest and move on if it doesn't work. It's okay to be hurt by rejection. Just don't blame them, just keep looking. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. Have a nice evening. Kitos.